Hello guys, we're going to start the November 2020 Math Lit Paper 2 paper, and this is for DBE, okay? So let's just see what's going on here. Before, before I go through the instructions, please note, right, that you're always going to have annexures and you're also going to have an answer sheet. Those are generally at the back. I've detached mine, right? They're just sitting here next to me. You can do that as well, but make sure that you put your exam number, etc., on them because you don't want to lose those pieces of information. I just want to highlight a couple of pieces of information here. Please start each question on a new page, okay? I won't necessarily do that because I want to save paper, but the reason they ask you to do that is they split the questions out and they mark by different people. So just be careful about that. Um, then also note here, rounding is, um, it says round off all answers appropriately according to the given context. I'll speak to that with each question, but please bear that in mind. And then indicate units of measurement, right? So remember, if you don't indicate that, you can lose marks. So just always note that you put that in. If You, you don't want to lose marks for something as silly as that. Okay. Um, let's move on to question one. So question one is a standard sort of um, interpretation question. It's a little bit of stats. So let's see what we can do. It says, Lindiwe is interested in early childhood education. She, re she researched the number of learners enrolled in early childhood education in selected countries. So this is the table that she's collected. You get all the different countries down the one side, and then you get all the different years, right, along the top. And here is the number of children. You'll see there's a missing um, you, uh, sort of number there. Um, don't stress, they're probably going to make us um, calculate it, but always go to the questions to give you a bit of steer as to what you should be looking at, okay? So first question says, determine the difference in number of learners enrolled in Slovakia in 2015 and 2016. So here's Slovakia. If you need to, use a highlighter. So it's the difference between that number and that number. Please look how I've set out my answer, right? Originally, I actually looked in the wrong column. Look in the right column, put it into your calculator like this, right? Write your answer and then we are done. Okay, my lighting seems to be a bit strange, right? So I don't know why, just there we go. I think it's back. Okay, apologies. Sometimes there's a little bit of an issue there. Okay, question one. Let's now move on to 1.1.2. Okay, always remember to number your questions correctly. Okay, next question. It says the range, right? And now we know the range is the max minus the min, okay? So if you need to write that in when you're doing it, by all means do that, okay? So that you know where you're going. Enrolled for 2014, so we're looking at this year, is 2947664, okay? So they tell us where the maximum is. So we can go look at over here and we can see that that's in Germany. Okay. Then it says here, calculate the value of N, which represents the lowest number of learners enrolled in 2014. So N is in Cyprus. Okay. And basically they're telling us that it's this minimum here when we do the range. So let's go and write this out correctly. Okay. So we see... And, and this is, they're just testing whether you understand how to do range, right? So range equals your max minus your min. We know that our range, and they've given us the value over here, right? The 2947664, so we're going to put that in. 2947664. Our maximum is that amount that I already identified for you, right? There it is over there. And our minimum is this random number n. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we want to find n. n is basically going to be the difference between these two numbers here. Okay, now you could be saying, oh man, this is like a lot of algebra. But basically what you're doing, and, and it's, it's a fair amount of algebra, but you're going to say this amount here, the maximum, minus the range is going to give me my n value. Okay, that's what it's saying. So just put that into your calculator. For those of you who are a little bit more familiar with algebra, you're more than welcome to go and solve it algebraically, sort of like moving the n around. But as long as you understand the mechanism, it shouldn't be a problem. You'll see here that I've typed this in incorrectly. Okay, biggest thing here is to type it in correctly. So my n value is 22772. Okay, perfect. That's my answer there. Let's go to the next question and continue, right? We're making good progress. Determine the trend shown by the number of learners enrolled in Greece. Okay, so let's look at Greece. So it went 231155, then it went 225596, and then 214109. So do you see that it's decreasing? 
right? So it says the trend. So you don't have to like be like, yeah, it's decreasing because of this, 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 and the next thing. All you need to say is it is decreasing, right? So you can say it's decreasing from 2014 to 2016. It's important that you put that in because you can't say it's decreasing always because we haven't got all the information for always. We only have it for this little period here. So make sure that you do that correctly. Okay. Then it says, determine whether Turkey or the United Kingdom had, had the largest percentage increase from 2014 to 2016 regarding the number of learners enrolled in early childhood education. Show all your calculations. Now, that sounds like one of these questions where you're like, come again. And yes, maybe you do need to read it again. But let's just look at the constituent parts. So there's Turkey, there's the United Kingdom. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to go identify those. There's Turkey, there's the United Kingdom. Okay, then it said have the largest percentage increase, important, from 2014 to 2016. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the percentage increase for each of those two countries. Let's start with Turkey. Okay, what period is it over? 2014 to 2016, so be careful. We're going to say 2016. So generally what you say here is you say new minus old over old times 100. Okay, you should remember that formula. It's one that we do in the syllabus. If you're like, oh, I haven't ever done that before, don't stress, write it down now and keep it in your notes for later. Right, all I'm doing now is I am literally subbing this in for Turkey. Okay, so you see I'm literally using that. That's my new being the most recent, right? That's my old, and then I put it over my old and I times it by 100. What's tricky here is students often put this into their calculator incorrectly. So just be very careful that as you are doing this, you're doing it in such a way that you're putting in your values correctly. Okay. Perfect. So this here is a percentage. So it is 14.75%. So you would have got like two marks over there, maybe possibly three. But now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for the UK. So the UK, there's the new there's the old, so I'm going to say 22248162 minus 1596803 over 1596803 times by 100. Again, what's important here, you put it into your calculator accurately. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I'm trying to show you what's on my calculator. While I'm doing this, I'm tell you, I want to tell you a story. One of my boys, I don't know who it is, one of my students, he's stolen my calculator. So I had to go buy a new one. So I was recording earlier this morning and then I couldn't continue with the video because one of my boys had stolen my calculator. So love that for me. But anyways, we now have a calculator and we are doing our best. Okay, be careful that you put this in correctly. Your answer here is 40.79%. Okay, so now you've done it for Turkey and you've done it for the UK. The question said, though, determine whether Turkey or UK had the largest percentage. So we know, therefore, UK had the largest percentage, right? So the UK um, had largest, oh, sorry, largest increase. Okay, so what's important with these questions isn't isn't so much, I mean, the calculations are important, but often what students do is they do all the calculations and they forget the conclusion. Please remember there are marks allocated for the conclusion, so don't forget about that. It's quite important. Okay, we're doing excellently, right? Let's go on to our next question. It says determine as a decimal fraction. That's quite important. It says a decimal fraction. Okay, so we need to make sure that our representation is correct. Okay. The probability of randomly selecting a country in this table, which shows a decline in enrollment from 2015 to 2016. Okay, so let's see which ones are declining. I'm going to put a little symbol. I've got another pen here. I've got a red pen. Okay, so let's see. Um, this one decreased. So that one decreased. Uh, this one decreased. This one increased. This one increased. Greece decreased. Cyprus was increasing. Slovenia increasing, Serbia, increasing, Turkey, increasing, Slovakia, increasing, United Kingdom, increasing. So there is three. But how many in total? Because remember, that's what probability is. 
How many ways can I get what I want over how many possible ways could I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So my answer here is going to be three over eleven, but it asks for a decimal fraction. So we're going to say three divided by eleven on our beautiful calculator, and it's going to be zero point two seven. Okay. Do you see that in general, just going back to the rounding, in general, you're going to round off to two decimal places. Okay, so that's why I round off, round off there. Okay, let's do our last question. Okay, our last question is quite a big one, so I'm just going to quickly go into the back of this page. Okay, let's just move on. 1.1.6. This one's quite a big question, but we're not phased. We're just going to continue going. So it says... The cost per child for early childhood education in Denmark in 2016 was that much. With the comparative cost in Slovenia, Slovenia was that much per month. Okay, so it says Lindewe stated that the ratio of the total amount spent for all the learners enrolled in 2016 in Denmark compared to Slovenia is more than 5 to 1. It's more than 5 to 1. Okay, so we basically have to find this ratio. And I could be saying, oh, but there's like a lot of things happening there. Basically what we need to do is we need to say, well, the amount that they spend per month, right, we want to times it up so that we find the total. So we're going to say the amount they spend per month on each child times by the number of children. We're going to do that for Denmark, and we're going to do that for Slovenia. And that will basically tell us about the allocation between uh, the allocation in Denmark towards this early childhood education and the allocation in total for Slovenia as well. We're going to put in a ratio, Simplify that ratio as far as possible and see whether it's 5 to 1 or not. Okay, if it's larger, smaller, equal to, right? That's what we're going to figure out. So let's start with good old Denmark, right? So we're going to look at Denmark. And Denmark, we're going to say 5 to 0 0.83. Let's say 2016. So let's find Denmark. Denmark in 2016 is 284655. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We put that into our calculator. Please make sure you put it in correctly. It is very easy to get wrong, and you don't want to lose marks for things like that. Okay, they spent lots of money here. So 148256863.70. Okay, perfect. What you can do is you can store this on your calculator if you want to, right? So you can go shift, store, and I'm storing it as A. It just means that every time I press alpha A, right? I then get my number back, which means I don't have to type it in again. It's particularly helpful when you have big numbers. Okay, so we've done Denmark. And then what was the other country? It was Slovenia. Okay, Slovenia, they had 350 rand per um, child, right? Or per month per child. Okay, let's go to Slovenia. Slovenia is also in 2016, so it's going to be 85407. Okay. Um, make sure that we're putting it in correctly and we get 2, 2989-2450. Okay. Now, what's quite important is we need to look at and think about units here, right? I haven't put any units in. But what is it? It's this euro sign here. Okay. So don't forget to put those euro signs in there. Okay, now we need to do a ratio. The ratio that they asked us to do was Denmark to Slovenia. So I'm going to say Denmark to Slovenia. And that's going to be the one for 82568637.702. Well, you need to put like a little ratio. Sorry, I wrote that a bit, a bit ugly now. Okay, so you put that in. Okay, right. So we just need to check that we've done this correctly, right? Um, so it talks about the total amount spent for all the learners, right, in 2016. Oh, so I've made a little bit of an error. In 2016, what are we talking about there? The whole year. What is this that I've done here? It's per month, okay? It's per month. So what we need to do is we need to times each of these by 12. But the reality of it is, right, because I'm timesing each of them by 12, 
it doesn't actually make that much difference, right? Because those two 12s, when I divide through, they're going to fall away. So just to note that you need to, you need to times by 12, because it did say in 2016, but you'll see that whether you times by 12 or not, you'll get the same answer. Now you could be saying, yo ma'am, I don't know what you're saying. But basically what I'm saying is I'm saying this, the, these numbers just by themselves is month compared to month. Times it by 12 is year compared to year. And we want to make sure that this side is one, right? And then to make this side one, what do I have to do? Well, I have to divide it by itself, right? So that's what you have to do, right? And what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So then I have to also, um, I think I'm writing this wrong. Um, I have to also divide this side by the same amount. So this amount that I have here, remember what did I save my previous Denmark as? I, did, I put it as A. I'm dividing it by my answer. That was what Slovenia was. And it gives me 4.9596 dot, dot, dot. Okay, you could have rounded it off if you want to. That's fine. But now we have this ratio. So it's saying for every one euro that was spent in Slovenia, 4.9596, et cetera, et cetera, was spent in Denmark, right? What was the statement we had to actually disprove or substantiate? Well, it said, it said, Lindiwe stated that the ratio of the total amount spent for all the learners enrolled in 2016 in Denmark compared to Slovenia is more than 5 to 1. So is this true? Is it greater than 5 to 1? No. Then you, say, then you say, therefore, no, Lindiwe is wrong. So please remember to always come full circle with your answers. A lot of students, what they do is they forget that conclusion. Okay, so now we've done a fair amount. We've just done just under 25 marks. That's like one-sixth of the paper. So not bad. Let's continue to 1.2.